Welcome to it. Welcome to another video. If you've been around for a hot minute, this isn't my normal setup. You could probably tell. That's because we are one month away from moving into our new place. The packing and organizing has began. My desk is like a total show right now. So welcome to my temporary backdrop. It's just a blank wall. But anyways, welcome to another video, guys. How's it going? What's going on? I'm so excited. Today, we are finally, finally doing our first ever reading vlog on the channel. Guys, I am so excited. This has like been a long time coming, honestly. About a week or two ago, I did a poll on my community page. I wanted you to pick between two different books, Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover and The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. The people have spoken. Our first ever reading vlog is going to be The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins. Read and I'm not mad about it. I am so so excited about this book. I hear amazing things about this, guys, and I'm so happy you chose it to be our first ever reading vlog book. For those of you who chose Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover, don't be sad, do not be disappointed because this will definitely be our second reading vlog on the channel. For those of you who want to see me read Ugly Love Live, stay tuned because this will be the next book we will be reading. After I read The Seven Husband of Evelyn Hugo, I haven't watched any reading vlogs before, so we're just winging it. This is going to be spoiler free. I will not give out any spoilers until the very, very end of the video. So if you haven't read the book yet either, don't worry. Just for a quick little summary, reclusive Hollywood icon Evelyn Hugo is finally ready to tell the truth about her glamorous and scandalous life. But when she chooses unknown magazine reporter Monique Grant to write her story, no one is more astounded than Monique herself. Determined to use this opportunity to jumpstart her career, Monique listens in fascination, from making her way to LA in the 1950s to leaving show business in the 80s, and of course the seven husbands along the way. She was busy. Evelyn unspools a tale of ruthless ambition, unexpected friendship, and a great forbidden love. But as Evelyn's story nears its conclusion, it becomes clear that her life intersects with Monique's own in a tragic and irreversible ways. There's a forbidden love in here which we love. I feel like the seven husbands are definitely going to be very interesting to read about. We're going to love some, we're going to hate some. It's going to be really cool to see how Monique intersects with her life. Maybe Monique's like her long lost daughter or something? No, I don't know. I feel like that'd be weird. It's not going to be that. I feel like that's too like easy to guess, I feel like. But I am so excited. Thank you so much for everyone who voted on my poll for this being the first book we read. Also, before we jump into the video, I just want to say thank you so much for 5k on YouTube. 5k was actually my goal for 2022. Like I wanted to hit it by the end of the year and we hit it in the second month. So thank you so much. Thanks for all the support and the love. You guys literally make my day. When I get comments on my videos, I like saw. <laughs> but we are gonna hop right into this book. We're gonna go get cozy and comfy because I'm not just gonna read on the floor, guys. Let's go read it. <laughs> haven't even started it and I love it. Poor Lila. Smash the patriarchy, sweetheart. I already love it and I haven't even started it. Okay guys, little change of scenery. I know I'm actually leaving right now because I am going to a bridal appointment, but I wanted to update you. So I read the first five chapters of the book. Oh my gosh. So far she just seems like a super badass woman. Basically what's happened so far is Evelyn Hugo wants someone to write a article about her and she reaches out to a magazine and requests Monique. Everyone at her magazine is super surprised because Monique isn't like one of their top writers. They even try and send Evelyn their top writers and and Evelyn's like, no, I either want Monique or it's not happening. Monique gets there and meets Evelyn and immediately is starting to just fall under Evelyn's spell. Very quickly, we find out that Monique's not just there to write an article about Evelyn. She doesn't want an article done about her and she doesn't want to work with this magazine at all. She only wants to work with Monique and basically what she wants Monique to do is write a biography about her. In her entire life, her seven husbands, it took such a fast turn and I was just like, whoa what's going on? And of course Monique is like, why me? Why did you pick me to do this? It like doesn't make sense. Monique is writing this book and she gets to keep all the money and profit from it. Literally like she can make millions off this. So rightfully so, Monique is like, what's going on here? Evelyn will not give it up. Something's a little fishy here guys. I don't know what it is yet, but something's off. Something is up here. And the hook that Monique came up with for the book is who was Evelyn Hugo's real true love? 
this is a wild book randomly throughout like the first three chapters there were like little news articles posted the spill.com evelyn hugo's coming clean a little blog slash news article that they put in and i thought it was really cool to add in i left off after chapter five and when i turned the page i thought it'd be chapter six but it just says this i looked through a little bit and it looks like there's different sections of the book and it's divided by evelyn's seven husbands poor ernie diaz okay guys it's been like a whole day since i picked up this book but we're picking it back up and we are starting Ernie Diaz. So obviously he's the first husband of Evelyn. From what she was saying about him, I don't think he's obviously like the love of her life. She talked about how she met him and then how she lied about her age. And so just like the vibe I'm getting from Evelyn, I don't think he was like her one true love. He is part of her rising up as a star and stuff like that. But we are gonna jump right in and start reading it. I know there's like a few chapters in his section obviously. Oh, it looks like there's actually not that many chapters. I feel like we can just predict right there that it's probably not gonna be good. <laughs> okay, so we're learning a little bit more about Evelyn's like childhood and coming up. It's really sad, okay? She definitely had a sad childhood. Her father was abusive. She lost her mom really young and she talks about how she basically used her sexuality to Get what she wanted. We are now to the part where Ernie comes in. Evelyn wanted to get as far away from Hell's Kitchen as she could. When she heard that Ernie was headed to Hollywood, she knocked on his door, married him. Ernie and I got married on February 14th, 1953. I became Evelyn Diaz. I was just 15 by that point, but my father signed the papers. I have to think Ernie suspected I wasn't of age, but I lied right to his face about it, and that seemed good enough for him. He wasn't a bad looking guy, but he also wasn't particularly book smart or charming. Charming. He wasn't going to get many chances to marry a beautiful girl. I think he knew that. I think he knew enough to grab the chance when it swung his way. It's hard because like I feel bad for her. I can understand why she's doing this because she wants to get away from her horrible life. I mean she has an abusive father. Like I don't blame her. So I don't know what's gonna happen though. I feel like they're probably gonna go to Hollywood and because Evelyn is so like drop dead gorgeous, she is going to ditch Ernie as soon as she gets the chance. <laughs> which might be really crappy to say, but I just think that's what she's gonna do. So Evelyn got a job at a restaurant because she was hanging around there waiting to be like discovered and she just met Harry Cameron, which is one of her husbands. She just met Harry Cameron and he was the one to discover her. My gosh, guys. So she's talking to Harry Cameron right now because she wants to star in a film. He said no because she doesn't fit the part because her name is Evelyn Diaz. Apparently, that means she's Mexican, even though she's not even Mexican, she's Cuban. Okay, Harry Cameron. She brought up how she'd like to star in a different movie and he said no because she's not blonde. So we just finished up Ernie Diaz. Oh my gosh, it was so short. It was literally only a chapter. That was his entire story and she left him at the end. And then there was one more chapter and it was just about Monique's reaction to it. So basically Harry Cameron told Evelyn that she had to like get photos and be seen around town with like the other up and coming hot Hollywood guys. He basically recommended her this one person to help her like get a divorce and an annulment and she did it she left ernie like so fast and like i don't i don't even like feel bad for ernie yeah like she shouldn't have to be married to someone like that i'm very sus about the whole thing because i still have this weird feeling that evelyn and monique have some relationship like they are related there's something deeper to this that now we are on to don adler and his section is called Goddamn Don Adler. We are about to read about Goddamn Don Adler. We are on husband number two. Just really quick, I think it's so funny because Harry is the one who's basically like inventing Evelyn during this time and they wind up getting married later on in time. Obviously, we know this already. It's just so funny because he's like pushing her to date all these guys. It's so funny. Like during that time, Harry was really pushing for me to go out on a few dates with Brick Thomas. Brick was a former child star and a matinee idol who, honest to God, thought he might be the Messiah. I'm crying. Are you kidding me? The Messiah? Like, the guys that she had to date. <laughs> okay, Don is giving me all the feels right now, guys. Oh my God. Don looked at me. I think you're the most gorgeous woman I've ever seen in my life what did I just read? Towards the end, there's like a weird scene with Evelyn and Harry and she's basically asking Harry like, why did you like 
never try anything on me like everyone else. They basically just tell each other that they're best friends and that they tell each other everything and that they're happy to be so close and be best friends. And then the chapter ended with one line that I won't say because no spoilers and I won't ruin it for you, but goddamn Don Adler, guys. So much more happened in this section than I thought would happen. Like I thought it was just gonna be about Don and that's it, but it, it wasn't. It was so much more. Basically, Celia is another upcoming and rising star in Hollywood, just like Evelyn. She takes on the role of Beth in Little Woman. In the beginning, it makes you think that like you're not gonna like her because she's like an up-and-coming star and it's really competitive. Evelyn and Celia wind up becoming so close. Their relationship development is so beautiful, guys. Like, you're not ready for this. So the chapter is mainly about, obviously, her second husband, Don, but it you get so much more out of it than just him like he's really not the highlight of the chapter if you ask me he, he's just a jerk okay guys it has been a few days since i picked up this book and actually like read anything but it's sunday we just got back from brunch and we are about to start the chapter on gullible mick riva i am so excited i feel like this chapter is going to be very scandalous <laughs> before we get too deep into mick Riva, McRiva. I just wanted to point out that because Evelyn and Don got a divorce, Evelyn's now being like blacklisted by Hollywood. So like she's not getting any roles and she's not growing like she used to. And she also didn't win an Oscar for Little Woman like she was meant to. Instead, Celia did. It seems like the papers and the paparazzi are making it seem like Celia and Evelyn hate each other and like have this vendetta against each other. But that's not the case, guys. That's not the case. Yeah, so Evelyn's being blacklisted right now by Hollywood because of Dawn. But she's not exactly back at square one, but she's kind of. It's just really cute and it makes me really happy. Evelyn's at home watching Celia on TV win the Oscar or whatever and because Evelyn wasn't invited because she was blacklisted. But Celia just won the award and she was like thanking everyone like Harry Cameron and Ari Sullivan. She thanked the cast and she was like, and of course Evelyn Hugo. It's so funny. Evelyn says when she said my name, I swelled with pride and joy and love. I was so goddamn happy for her and then I did something mortifyingly insane. I kissed the television. I kissed her right on her grayscale face. That is so cute. The clink I heard registered before the pain and as Celia waved to the crowd and then stepped away from the podium, I realized I chipped my tooth. That's a really great friend if you ask me. Evelyn's writing a letter and she says, please never forget that the sun rises and sets with your smile. At least to me it does. You're the only thing on this planet worth worshiping. All my love. So Evelyn went to Paris. She's shooting a movie with a French director trying to get her name back out there. And it's called Bouton Train. I don't know. I'm probably saying that wrong. I'm so sorry if I am. But that's the film that literally gets her back into Hollywood and gets her back out there. Because there's a scene where she's near the lake and she's topless. They cut out the scene before you can actually see her. It's what basically brought her back into the spotlight. And now she's like an international superstar. Mick Riva is a singer who has seen the film several times and is obsessed with Evelyn. And then on the next page, it says, Don Adler and Ruby Riley engaged, question mark. That two-faced Ruby Riley. The end of the news article says, we are so happy for Don and Ruby, but we can't help but wonder how Don feels about Evelyn's skyrocketing fame. She's the hottest thing under the sun right now, and if we had let her go, we'd be kicking ourselves. Regardless, best wishes to Don and Ruby. Hopefully, this one sticks. <laughs> I love that so much. Okay, guys, so we got to the end of Mick Reva's, like, section in the book. Honestly, I feel like he didn't play, like, a big part in his own section. He wasn't that important or that interesting. They literally were married for, like, a day, not even. So no one cares about him. But what we do care about is the fact that Celia and Evelyn aren't, like, friends anymore which is kind of sad and it says that Evelyn doesn't like see her again for like five more years and they just don't talk and I'm heartbroken. Evelyn and Harry are coming together to basically create a film together. They both are apart from Sunset now and they're nervous that the film's gonna flop. So Evelyn's next big plan includes her next husband, Rex North. She's basically going to try and marry Rex so that their views are higher and their film doesn't flop. I just finished Rex North's like section in the book and I can't really tell you too much about it 
just because there were so many spoilers in it and like it's hard to tell you like certain things that happened because like I would just spoil the whole main concept and idea of the book but I can tell you that he was definitely one of Evelyn's like better husbands and their whole marriage was basically based on just getting more fans and like getting their films like more views and stuff like that like they were married but they didn't love each other they lived separate lives and stuff like that in the end they obviously get divorced because she's only on husband four so they got divorced and it was nice and easy divorce like they were only together to like boost their movies up literally in the box office so it was a successful marriage honestly but now we are moving on to the one that we've been waiting for guys we're moving on to harry cameron and honestly he has the biggest like section out of all the husbands and i am so excited to read about him we love harry cameron he's the best and his section is brilliant kind-hearted and tortured harry cameron not that evelyn and celia have like reunited yet but i'm getting a sense that they're definitely going to reunite in harry cameron's section of the book they had a baby. Evelyn and Harry had a baby. They named her Connor. It seems like they are living the perfect life and Harry is the perfect husband. Oh my gosh. We finished Harry Cameron's section of the book and oh my gosh. Um, we love Harry Cameron. We stand Harry Cameron. He is a great man. So much happened. Basically, Evelyn married Harry. Her and Celia reconnected and became friends. And then Evelyn wound up doing a film with her ex, Don Adler. The whole thing was so super weird and her and Celia stopped being friends again because of it. At the end of this section, Evelyn and Harry get divorced. Honestly, this was like the most heartbreaking husband to read about, I think, just because I love Harry Cameron so much. Such a great husband and just such a great friend to Evelyn overall without giving away too many spoilers and stuff. It was just really heartbreaking. <laughs> but now we are on to husband number six and that is disappointing Max Gerard. I just wanted to update you because I read Max's like section of the book and there's just so many spoilers and like so much happens. It's just the sixth and seventh husband of the book. It's definitely just like the whole thing unraveling, finding out all the secrets. It's just wild. Max's section of the book was probably the most heartbreaking. Like I cried. I literally cried reading this. It's just a lot to kind of unpack. As for Max, he wasn't the greatest husband but he also like wasn't the worst husband he was a jerk but not like the worst of them but now we are on to the final husband of evelyn hugo's we are on to husband number seven guys it is robert jameson celia's younger brother and he is evelyn's seventh husband we are about to read the last portion of this book we are about to find out what happens after husband number seven agreeable robert jameson so Evelyn married Robert Jameson, who is Celia's brother, and the two of them moved out to Spain, where Celia also bought a house, so they're all living out there now. Connor, Evelyn's daughter, is about to take off for college. Like, that's how many years have passed by. Connor's already going to college. The time has flown by. This just doesn't get better. It just keeps ripping my heart out. I'm not even kidding. I don't even think I could finish this. I am on chapter 63. I only have like three or four more chapters left. I really don't think I can finish this because I'm going to bawl my eyes out. Oh my gosh, guys. We just finished reading The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. It, this was like the craziest read I think in a long time for me. I have not read something like this in honestly years. So many surprises and shocking turns in this book. This is amazing. I have to get more books by her. Five out of five stars, hands down. I think just getting to know Evelyn and her life story and you know how she made her way to the top and how hard she worked and the people that she met along the way and she loved and the people who hurt her and put her down like it was just this was crazy this is so so good five out of five stars 
Okay guys, now we are to the point in the video where we are going to talk about spoilers. So if you haven't read this book in its entirety, don't watch this part of the video because I don't want to ruin it for you. This is such a beautiful book and it's so, so, so good. So read it before you watch the spoiler section. So many crazy things that happened in this that I didn't expect to happen. Start with Celia St. James and Evelyn Hugo in their beautiful, beautiful relationship. Celia St. James was Evelyn's one true love. My heart really broke for them the entire story. They were two women madly in love with each other and that just wasn't accepted back then. And being that they were in the spotlight and movie stars, if they were caught, their careers and their life's work would be thrown down the drain. And they finally come back together. They throw the past behind them. They move to Spain and they spend the last few years together. It made my heart so happy. But then Celia died and I cried like a little baby because I couldn't believe that. When Evelyn was holding Celia when she passed, she was just saying like, we didn't have enough time. I didn't have enough time with you. My heart literally broke into tiny little pieces. I'm not okay after that, but also I'm not okay after Harry Cameron. Aside from Celia St. James, he was Evelyn's true soulmate, and I loved it so much. The craziest part of it all, guys, Monique Grant and how she is connected to Evelyn Hugo. Are you kidding me? I know it's inevitable, but oh my god, really? And then, of course, Evelyn passes away in the end. She was diagnosed with breast cancer, just like her daughter, and instead of waiting for the breast cancer to take her, Evelyn took her own life. Okay guys, that is all for my first ever reading vlog on my channel. I just want to say thank you to everyone who voted on my poll and who voted this book to be our first reading vlog book. Thank you just so much. This was such, such a good read, such a beautiful and powerful story. This might be one of my favorite books ever. Five out of five stars. I recommend this to you and to everybody and beyond because this was just... Evelyn Hugo, man. As always, don't forget to comment down below any book recommendations you have for me. If you have read this book, let me know what you think about it down below. Make sure if you're talking spoilers, put a little spoiler warning so we don't ruin it for everyone else who hasn't read it yet. If you've read other books by Taylor Jenkins Reid, let me know what you think and let me know what other books of hers you may recommend. I was thinking of picking up Malibu Rising. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it because it really helps me out. So go like the video. Go like it right there. I'll wait. And then of course, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more of me, if you like my vibe, if you like book videos, booktube. I post weekly, guys. I post weekly. It's basically free entertainment every week. So you might as well subscribe. I hope you enjoyed our first ever reading vlog video. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you guys in my next video.